On a sweltering day in August 1945, and in the shadow of an increasingly oppressive Russian occupation, the people of a Hungarian village are preparing for the wedding of the son of the town's clerk. Meanwhile, two mysterious strangers dressed in black arrive at the train station. They are Orthodox Jews, father and son, survivors of the Holocaust, and have brought with them two boxes which they want to bring into the village. Rumors immediately start spreading like wildfire within the community, many of the inhabitants having been involved one way or another in the crimes committed against Jews during the Holocaust, and thinking that the man may be relatives of the village's deported Jews, and fearing that more survivors might come and demand what was illegally taken from them back, poses a threat to the property and possessions the villagers have become so comfortable with claiming as their own, and their dark and dirty secrets will emerge to the surface in the process. I think the idea of the post-Holocaust slash post-war film is really very interesting. Certain films come to mind like a Polish Oscar winner Ida, or, or Under the Sand, or even Remember. I, I just think it's very interesting how these films tackle the subject of reckoning with the past. Because, you know, historically speaking, we know when a particular war or conflict began and ended. We have all of those facts. But what about the people? What about the places? What about the events that are outside of history, that are sort of post-history, if you will? What about the people and the events we rarely get to hear about or rarely get to read about? The events of the film start immediately as the war ends. We hear a broadcast on the radio in the very beginning of the film about the bombings of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And, you know, the war is over. Everyone is still naive. Everyone is still hastily looking forward to the future, making big plans, the clerk of the village, who just might be the character who comes closest to being the main character, is, is really vehement about, about passing the torch onto his son, about marrying him off, and about making sure that he continues to run and to be in charge of the village's thriving drugstore, two things his son really doesn't seem to want to have any part of. It's very interesting how this film, instead of focusing on a single character or character arc, instead chooses to focus on several characters, but has absolutely no character arcs. Nobody really changes throughout this film, nobody really learns anything, nobody really changes his or her mindset or mentality. This is a very pessimistic and very bleak film about some very guilt-ridden people, most of them being scumbags one way or another, and most of them, especially the people belonging to the older generation, they have already committed their actions, the damage is already done, now it is time for them to face them, and now it is time for them to either learn to live with their actions and themselves, or let the sins of their past eat them alive. Some of them seem to be coping with it better than others, the idea is that this is a very uncomfortable situation, and the town's clerk, who is basically the leader of this whole community really tries to let everyone know that hey let's just act casual let's just do our thing let's just pretend that not much is happening he even sucks up to the Russians so that they don't interfere with their festivity and it's very interesting that his son's bride-to-be's former fiance is especially reacting rather well to the whole situation he is like sort of the, the alpha male macho guy of the, of the village who has absolutely no moral principles he speaks Russian and he has absolutely no qualms when it comes to sucking up either to the Soviets or to his former fiance. Rawr. Others are having a lot harder time dealing with the whole situation. The village's alcoholic, for example, is really racked with guilt and really just wants to give everything back to the Jews. He really risks spilling the beans for everyone else, while his wife is really quick to, to hide the acquired stuff they gained from the Jews, like carpets and silverware and stuff like that, in their basement. While the clerk's wife, who is a drug addict and who suffers from depression, it, it knows that there is something fishy going on between her son's bride to be and her former fiance. And she, she was not afraid to let her know that she, she is in on the whole thing, let, yet she doesn't have the guts to do anything about it. So everyone is basically crooked. The villagers really seem to be very wary of outsiders. The clerk even has a line in the film in which he says that it's a new world. The master or peasant doesn't matter. We accept everyone as long as they're Hungarian. <laughs> and I think it's that sort of like hypocritical and destructive mentality that leads us to stuff like the world wars and like the Holocaust in the very first place. They don't even know how to react to the Soviets, whether to love them or to fear them. And they don't realize that they themselves are their own worst enemies. They don't realize that this village and this community was rotten way before the Jews were deported. The tensions between the members of the community have absolutely nothing to do with the Jews. Every single marriage we see in the film, whether it's between the, the alcoholic and his wife or the clerk and his wife, are complete train wrecks. And even the priest seems to share some of the dark, dirty secrets. The only character here who seems to be level-headed is the young dude who is about to get married off. Uh, maybe in a more drama-heavy piece, he would have been the main character 
character, but you know, this, this is not that. This is more of sort of like a ticking time bomb, like sort of pseudo western thriller thing. And he is the one who realizes, and we realize it as well simultaneously with him, that this village is doomed. It is beyond repair, and the only solution is to run, is to flee, is to just go. The black and white cinematography is quite stunning. It does an excellent job at recreating the period, not necessarily as it looked in reality, of course, but as it looks in the collective consciousness. It has these very sort of like murky and washed out colors, and they do a very interesting job in the way they use blocking and the way they ensemble certain elements within the frames. We are constantly getting glimpses of the village either through, through fences or through doorways or windows, so our vision is constantly being blocked, and we are given the sense that we are seeing history as it is being written before our eyes. We are observing it as mere flies on the wall, we cannot interfere, we can only watch it as unfolding be before our eyes. It's a very engrossing and a quite a suspenseful experience. And that's exactly the way these characters and the story feel. The past has come back to haunt him, history has taken a different course, and now it is striking back at them. And they cannot do a single thing about it. Of course they can pretend they can, just the way like they pretended that taking stuff from innocent deported Jews was morally alright, but that won't last forever. The film is basically all about condensing. It's all about time going by really really fast. It's basically a 90 minute film that takes place like in about the span of 3 or 4 hours, almost in real time, and it basically presents to us in microcosmic fashion the betrayal, the paranoia, and the hypocrisy of an entire society. And here I'm not just talking about Hungary, which of course did have a major part to play in the Holocaust, but also other countries, some of them more willfully, others more forcefully, took part in the Holocaust, there were civilians that couldn't really protest, so they, so they took advantage and profited of the situation and they thought that it was alright. And it just goes to show you how pathetic and hypocritical people are in their attempts at self-preservation. You know, we are defined by what we own, this house, this furniture, this stuff, these objects. Without them I'm nothing, without them I don't exist. It doesn't matter that I took them from somebody else, indirectly so, but those were the times. Well, be careful what you wish for, times might change, and the 1945 was a time that was not particularly kind to these sort of people. So those would be my two cents folks about 1945. I really 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 like this film and I can't wait to see it again. I would definitely recommend it. I think it's a great period piece and it's a great little sort of like pseudo western like pseudo thriller or sort of like anti-western or anti-thriller I would say even. I highly recommend this stuff. My question to you guys would be what are some of your favorite films that, that are sort of like these sort of post World War II or post Holocaust films that, that have to do with the Holocaust or the Second World War but don't directly take place during that period. Really interested to know about your answers. Thanks for watching my review, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so I can see you guys later with other reviews. And until then folks, as always, don't forget to stay cool, stay awesome and goodbye.